agglutination reaction the febrile antibody test principle the febrile antibody test is used in diagnosis of diseases that produce febrile fever symptoms some of microorganisms responsible for these condition are salmonella bruce lee and rickettsia febrile antigens such as endotoxins enzymes are elaborated by these organisms used to detect the homologous antibodies that develop in response to these antigens during infections now this principle contains two part first in this the antigen is mixed on a slide with the serum being observed cellular clumping is indicative of the presence of homologous antibodies and absence of antibodies is indicated by no visible clumping only the febrile antigens and antibodies of salmonella species will show clumping in this figure a shows visible clumping and positive reaction and b shows no clumping and negative reaction second part it illustrate that agglutination reaction such as the febrile antibody test can be used to identify an unknown microorganisms through serotyping a specific anti serum is prepared in a susceptible competent labo laboratory animal is mixed with a variety of unknown bacterial antigen preparations on slide the bacterial antigen that is agglutinated by the anti serum is identified and confirmed to be the agent of infection now requirements first one is culture watch the saline suspensions of e coli proteus vulgaris salmonella typhimurium and shigella dysentery reagents saline 0.85% nacl preparations of salmonella typhimurium h anti serum and salmonella typhimurium h antigen equipments bunsen burner inoculating loop slides testing tubes applicator stick marker water bath and microscope now procedure procedure is categorized into three parts first one is febrile antibody test take a slide and label the circle as a and b now to area a add one drop of salmonella typhimurium h antigen and one drop of 0.85% saline to area b add one drop of salmonella typhimurium h antigen and one drop of salmonella typhimurium h anti serum pick up the slide with fingers of one hand move the slide back and forth observe the slide microscopically under low power for cellular clumping or agglutination indicate the presence or absence of agglutination and note down the results now the second part is serological identification of an unknown organism or the identification of unknown organism in blood for this prepare two slide and label as a b c d into each area on both slide place one drop of salmonella typhimurium h anti serum now on that slide with a sterile inoculating loop suspend a loop full of each number coded unknown culture in the drop of anti serum in its appropriately labeled area on the slide pick up the slide and move slowly back and forth observe the slides microscopically and macroscopically under low power for agglutination indicate the presence or absence of agglutination in each of suspension 
also indicate the suspension that is indicative of a homologous antigen antibody reaction. Now the third part is determination of antibody titer. These tests give the quantitative result which measures the concentration of antibodies in the serum. In this, the endpoint of test will occur in test tube containing the serum having the highest dilution showing agglutination. Place a row of 10 test tube and number is 1 to 10. Pipette 1.8 ml of 0.85% saline into the test tube and 1 ml into each remaining 9 tubes and 8.2 ml salmonella typhimurium H antiserum into the first test tube. Now transfer 1 ml from tube to tube till tube 9. Pipette 1 ml of saline into tubes 2 to 10. Now discard the tube 9. Test tube 10 will serve as antigen control. Add 1 ml of salmonella typhimurium H antigen suspension adjacent to an absorbance of 0.5 at 600 nanometer to all tubes and mix the content of test tube by shaking. Now, mix the content of the test tube by shaking. In incubate the test tubes in, in a 55 degree Celsius water bath for 2 to 3 hours. Then indicate the presence or absence of agglutination in each of antiserum dilution. Also indicate the end point of the reaction. Thank you.